probably one of the most exciting things about that I love about Shop Talk is we're connecting for, unfortunately, a lot of cases, um, we're connecting teachers who are often the only, let's say, French teacher or language teacher in their school sometimes um, or in their entire, entire little town or wherever they're at. So it's, it's very exciting to be able to um, kind of be the, the colleagues of said teachers, right? these games and activities. I just want to show you what one of them is about if you've never tried this before, because it's kind of fun. It's a course de vocab, very, very simple. Um, a, a story will be read, a very short story. In this case, this one's about school. Um, this one's based on um, actually the song A l'école. So basically what will happen is um, a story will be read and inside that story will be obviously a lot of vocab because it's a French story. Well, three of those vocab words will be found in this, what looks like a word search, but it's not, it's a maze. And so what you have to do is when we say, you know, un, deux, trois, allez, you have to make a line from the very first word, then it's joined to the second word, which is joined to the third word, and that third word will end here at the bottom where this S is. So it's a race with our pens, and we have to see who the first person is that can find the three hidden school-related vocabulary words and make their way to the letter S at the end. Are you ready? Un, deux, trois, allez. I'll lead, and I'll show you how this is done. So, oh, actually, yeah. Well, you guys are right. Very good. Okay, why am I in fifth place? And this is, I know the answers. That's crazy. Um, let's see here. Oh, here we go. Uh, so actually, okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. I think I went the wrong way. I did go the wrong I way. I went the wrong way. <laughs> oh, look at this. Okay, you can restart, everybody. You can restart. Oops. Follow me. 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 All right, and then. Oh my. Anybody can catch up to me? Anybody can catch up to me? Oh, no, you guys didn't go up to the E. Okay, the blue person did. Who was that? I think officially, if you look really closely, everybody, Margaret's blue thing went up right and in, just touched into the E, so I think she actually qualified. So Margaret beat me by a hair there, so that was awesome. So it's a lot of fun to play this game. So you have to imagine, like when we play Kahoot, I don't know if you've ever been to um, our live Kahoot events, but we'll have like six schools from all over the world playing Kahoot at the same time, and it's just a blast. In this case, we'll have the six schools, we'll be at the starting line, and then usually each teacher will pick a student to run the mouse, and then the rest of the students have to shout out <laughs> to the student <laughs> whether to turn left, right, go up or down or whatever, and try to figure out what the three words are. So, it's going to be interesting because pretty very soon, actually, uh, what's going to happen is, is um, some teachers are volunteering now, and you'll see it a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more as we go along. But they're going to do like a block, um, like kind of during their, um, say, their prep, for example. So there'll be a 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and they'll just be on and they'll help us um, host, and then we, of course, in turn, will help host um, cool live events for them as well. So. Um, type a chat box in the Wii if you thought that was fun. All right. Enough fun and games. Okay. Language learning and language teaching shouldn't be fun. So I don't know where you people got that idea it should be. So let's get down to the serious stuff here with our guests. So welcome welcome so much. Thank you so much, Catherine, for joining us today. Um, I want to uh, welcome you on behalf of all of us. Um, perhaps what you could do is can you give us actually like a quick uh, bio, a little background about yourself for us. Well, I um, thank you for inviting me, Stephen and Etienne. It's really wonderful. I'm out here on the West Coast, and it is pouring, literally just buckets and buckets of rain. So if you hear some background noise, that's what it is. Um, I'm up in uh, Bellingham, Washington, which is 15, 20 minutes from the Canadian border, so British Columbia. So Vancouver is just my playground. And I'm a French teacher of French 2 through AP at Mount Vernon High School, and that's about 25 minutes south. 
Um, we now have two full-time French teachers. I started out there 10 years ago. I can't believe it's been 10 years. Um, we started out and I had three French classes, so I had 80 students and then I had to teach Spanish, Spanish one, and the second year we had a full schedule for me, so six classes and 180 students. And three years later, we had two full-time French teachers and well over 375 students taking French at the only high school in Mount Vernon. So we've done a lot of work to make our, our program grow, and I really reach out to the students who come from native speakers of Spanish or heritage speakers of Spanish or Russian or Ukrainian. We do have a great community. Um, Mount Vernon is a rural area, so we have the... Um, the Skagit Valley where we produce a lot of the blueberries and potatoes and tulips that you see around the world. Wow. And let's see, I did my university studies in uh, French language and literature at the University of Kansas. I did a master's there and then I moved out to Washington from Kansas, which if you've ever seen our mountains, you'll understand why I'm still here and loving every crazy rainy day that we have. It's been a wild, wicked um, week of, of rain and wind. Let's see, I'm also, um, I do a lot of things for organizations, so I'm in a um, ATF, and I'm the Region 9 rep, so that's kind of the West Coast, but not California, for, um, it's about 11 states, and I've been the regional rep for, this is my second year. I'm also the chair of the Technology Commission for the ATF, so I, I am the social media manager, which means I'm taking care of the Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, Digo, and the brand new, not brand new, it's been around for a while, the Teaching Resource Wiki for French Teachers. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, I'm, I've worked with Waffle, which is the Washington Foreign Language uh, Teacher Association, and um, you probably know that I was named PNCFL Teacher of the Year, so PNCFL, yeah. that's the Pacific Northwest Council for Teaching and Languages. A council for Teaching Languages, and so I was one of those five people up on the stage in November at Actful in Tennessee and Nashville, which yes, was one of the greatest honors. Thank you. It was one of the, I, I, I thought getting my master's in literature was one of the greatest honors I've ever uh, achieved, but it was humbling and empowering, and it was a wonderful experience. Um, I'm always on social media. Most people know me from at least one of 15 different places I hang out, Lurk, um, my big deal is supporting teachers through the curation of authentic and pedagogical materials. And I'm a big a fan of organizing things so that teachers who really do want to try something new or try uh, um, moving away from the textbook, maybe, that they have resources at the tip of their fingers so that they never have to spend their time looking and curating. And, and I know that it's a big deal. Um, it's, you know, if you have a family, you cannot spend more than an hour, if even, finding that perfect video. So I'm your go-to girl. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Cool. Well, you de definitely gave us a little bit about, you know, where it is that you teach. So the first question I wanted to ask you was about how have you adapted and adopted and adapted both um, the many philosophies and approaches to language learning to best support your students? Because you did allude to the fact that you do get um kind of a standard group of one type of kid you do have uh, a mixed group I, I agree um my students don't have the, the 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 easiest access to say like what you have out on the east coast with all the museums and the opportunities to travel a little bit more because it's closer my students are mostly Skagit Valley students who are going to stay in this region but I want them to connect with the Franco home world through language and literature and cultures and social justice units. And, you know, I think I started out um, about 17 years ago teaching in uh, Central Kitsap and I did a lot of TPRS storytelling. So not the kind of storytelling that is promoted right now, but more legends and fables and, you know, a lot of input for the students. So people okay. say, oh, you're a CI teacher. And I say, well, no, I don't follow everything CI. I do a lot of blending and mixing and matching. And it's been the idea of what do my students need? Not what do I prescribe to them, but what do they tell me they need? Love it. So once in a while, yeah, absolutely. We've got students who are concrete learners and must have a few concrete things. So I give that to them. But I also have a lot of visual learners and a lot of tactile learners. And I, I pull in so many different communicative activity resources, plus the reading, mm -hmm. 
plus listening. We do a lot of ed puzzles and they love those. So what I'm trying to do is present the students with the idea that I want to foster in them the love of learning language and culture, not the grade, not this is, I have to take this as a required class. And so I don't give a lot of, I don't give any tests. I'm just going to put it like that. I do IPAs, so integrated performance assessments, okay. which I call evaluations. And the students love that word there, just having their temperature taken. That's how they feel. Right. And I do projects, so they do a lot of digital storytelling. They have ways to demonstrate their knowledge at their pace. Um, I don't give quizzes or pop quizzes. We don't do language. Uh, we don't do uh, um, uh, conjugation charts. It's very organic the way I approach all of this. And I felt that the students, whenever we've talked about how they feel, they're confident learners. They're they're not perfect. And I, I bring in the actual can-dos and the levels all the time and show them, well, OK, let's see what you can do right now. Now, are you a novice low? Are you novice high? What do you feel like? Right. And so they go through that self-reflection of, oh, that's right. I shouldn't have to feel like I, I'm, I'm not fluent. You know, They always self-criticize so much, so I teach them. How can you evaluate the progress that you've made over the past three months from where you were when we started this idea to where you are now? And honestly, when you have students who are more confident about their own path and their pace, then they're going to be just naturally more interested in learning the language and going through the steps that it takes to get to where they want to be. Uh, so that's everything you should know about me. <laughs> no, 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 that's great. And 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 the philosophies and the approaches you take, I, I love it. Um, I think you're going to find a lot of kindreds here, right, on Shop Talk with the people that come in here, um, because hopefully people are starting to finally realize that there isn't one methodology, there isn't one philosophy or one approach. Oh, but there um, is, according to some people. <laughs> oh, oh, of course. And you and I both know that because we spend a lot of time on social media. So, and there's yeah. a lot of crusaders for specific um, philosophies, but uh, I can tell you that you would fit in very, very well at my school. Um, Cause that's exactly, oh, thank you. exactly what you just said is exactly what we do. And we incorporate, um, a lot of different approaches and philosophies and, and technology and and yeah it's just it's, it's fantastic um, so that's great to hear um, but not a surprise <laughs> can not I make one comment on that pardon me um, sorry. Missy Missy wrote in the comment that wouldn't work at my school district and I think that a lot of um, a lot of the reasons why I've made my transition towards the proficiency model is because ACTFL is there to support me as a professional organization so the school districts that are still into the traditional, let's do the vocab list, tests, um, memorizing verb charts, they're not looking at the actual standards or the outcomes that are expected at the different levels. I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying, if we're going to invite our school districts to help us support our students, it's important to that they know what what is expected of them. No, absolutely. No, Amy, that's beautiful. And, and Missy's being a little bashful because I know Missy. And um, and if Missy, if you're alluding to the fact that your school district kind of pushes one thing or is more prescriptive, mm -hmm. um, then you're uh, then you are a warrior and a rebel because I know that Missy actually um, is like us and does try and use successfully different philosophies and approaches. Awesome. So, and that's so. hard to be that warrior, by the way, because when <clears> I first started at Mount Vernon. I, I'll have to say that my, I'm going to say I was the only French teacher uh, with four Spanish teachers, three or four Spanish teachers who all said, uh, we're not playing with you. Go away. Right. Really. No. And so then I had to I had to spend maybe about seven years on my own doing whatever I wanted. And, and then all of a sudden they got sort of curious on why we were having so much success. And I said, well, I'm not going to tell you how to teach. I'm going to say these are some things that I do. No. And that's how we collaborate is share and listen and, and try and find a happy happy common ground. Right. Um, see, another thing I like about Shop Talk is people start to see perspectives um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and learn about the experiences of uh, teachers from other places around the world. And um, a lot of Canadian teachers don't know um, what it's like to be a French teacher in the United States. Um, mm -hmm. I know I've been very blessed because, of course, I've been touring all over the United States for 25 years doing concerts and working with French teachers just like yourself. Um, 
often in the situation where they're the only French teacher at the school, and then we do this rock and um, you know French rock and rap concert and blow all the way the the Spanish teachers. Of course, who else can have my music in Spanish too? But um, what the Canadian teachers and some of the other teachers from maybe around the world don't understand is there there is that interesting situation that that often happens in schools. And and I'm not saying that the Spanish teachers and French teachers don't get along. Please don't get me wrong. And that's oh, not what do. Catherine was saying at all. Um, but what I'm saying is it just does cause a different dynamics particularly when um, students are maybe asked to take one language or the other, um, that makes it very, very difficult. And we don't often have that in other other areas. So, yeah. And so, yeah, I'm glad that you're keeping your eye on the chat box because that's where a lot of people will post questions. So definitely keep, keep your eye there. And then I think uh, not even only internally, uh, Catherine, I think you would agree that some school districts, uh, whether it be a French coordinator or a language coordinator or world languages coordinator, um, might also uh, be quite prescriptive in the way that they're delivering their support. See how I did that very politically correct? I said very well done. Very the way well they're done. delivering their support. Um, <clears throat> um, that, that can make things very, very difficult for um, language teachers when they're actually not getting support. It's actually the opposite of support. <laughs> Um, so that makes and then when they're being told that the, what they're doing is the wrong way, oh. I really feel bad because there are schools, look, since we don't have a world language coordinator, we just, we have the one high school and the five of us are sort of on our own. Um, we come up with what we think is the best. But if I were in a district where someone was telling me I had to teach exclusively with one method, I myself don't know how I would do. I don't think I could be as successful a teacher as I am if I were prescribe that that one method or that one approach and, oh and so all of you who are that, who are that I, I'm so impressed with what you do I, I always when I do a workshops I say you know this is Catherine Landia this is where I teach um, I'm lucky I for me I feel lucky mm -hmm. and let me know how I can support you without prescribing telling you what to do thank you exactly and um, I feel bad for Dell Dell Del was saying that at her school, um, or Del, Del, I don't know if her or him, mm -hmm. sorry, but Del says Del, that, yeah. um, pardon me, sorry? Go ahead. Okay, sorry, it says that uh, their colleagues want to teach the kids in loops, so they basically keep the same kids for all four years. I, I would like to say that if you have a choice in that, and Catherine, I don't know what you can feel free to agree with me or disagree with me. My personal feeling after 25 years teaching and all the experience that I have um, the more voices students are exposed to, the better. I mean, that's why I use the specific programs that I use, like the DG Delph Kit, or I go on the French Playground, and we, we do live interviews with NHL stars and, 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 and actors and magicians and historians. It's because my students need to hear as many French voices as they possibly can. Um, so Beautiful. I don't think that is necessarily always a good thing if the teacher is the same teacher throughout the four years. What do you think? Okay, so that, that's interesting because my colleague right now, um, she's full time. Uh, she loves teaching French one. That is her thing. And I think she does great with the freshmen. So I kind of say, go for it. Um, so then the students come for me to from second through AP. And yep. I start wondering, I do start wondering, I said, maybe we should start switching up a bit back and forth between the <clears> two <throat> of us because they kind of get a little used to me once in a while. They get a little tired of me. And I say, Okay, let's go back and think about this because students new, do need to see a variety of approaches. Although my colleague and I teach almost, ex, you know, exclusively the same way, just I, I would love them to have more voices. That's true. Um, if we were a larger school, maybe we'd have three or four. There's some schools that have five or six French teachers, which oh, invite me. I'd love to watch that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think also, but but then again, I like students to have sort of a, a guided path with one teacher that knows them very well and can, uh, can help them identify where they need to work on. So I go back and forth on that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. No, I see both sides for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, and, and like you said, though, the, the same teacher that's teaching the same students for four years certainly has opportunities to enrich them with other voices through whether it's through songs, videos, films, uh, news, uh, live things on the internet. Like there's lots of opportunities to, to certainly bring that in. Um, Okay, um, let's see. Uh, oh, I love this. We have some very active engagement going on in the chat box. Yes, I, don't know I see that. Is. It is fan. I know, I know a lot of these people from from uh, from Twitter. It's wonderful to see you here. Yeah, that's fantastic. All right, I want to jump to the second question because I'm going to be really greedy. I, I just can't wait till you start showing us stuff. So <laughs> okay, go to the next question. Wonderful. Um, and there you are actually on stage, which is <gasps> awesome. So congratulations. Thank God that's over. <laughs> um, so 
what are you still working on? And what I love about you, say, see, okay, let me let me be very specific for everybody who's listening to this or, or, or is on live right now. For Catherine to talk about how she uses different styles, different methodologies, different philosophies, because she realizes her students are different. And she talked about also, if you were listening, how students are hard on themselves, they're, they're upset if they're not perfect and everything's not perfect or whatever. It means that you recognize that we as educators are not perfect. We are ever evolving. We are ever um, searching to do the best that we can for our students. So let me ask you, what isn't perfect in your world? Well, that 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 is, I'm not ashamed to talk about that. I, I try and explain as often when we get on LangChat even, I am not good at always providing timely feedback. And I have great methods and ideas of giving feedback. And I'm, I'm trying like with Google Forms where the students get a, um, a merged document that has all my comments on it. But with 180 students, I'm, I'm, I'm not always able to get through everyone. So I don't give as much feedback as I should. Um, sometimes too, when I have a, a class of say 30 students, I'm not able to assess everybody's needs and I start prescribing what they need to do to meet my standards and then I have to stop and say, remember each student is learning at his or her own pace, so give them that time to reflect and retry. So I'm always working on the, the personal growth for them and for me. Let's see, then I do a little bit, so I used to do, and I'm working on this still, um, too many things where the students are exposed to perhaps too much input. So I don't have a, a set list of vocabulary, but I like the idea of them grabbing what they want. Okay. So I've been going back and forth because I don't expect them to memorize a set list of vocabulary. Right. I say, if you don't like aubergine, okay, you're not gonna learn that word. Mm -hmm. So, you know, finding that, that common space for the students to say, I can tell you this much, I'm meeting that requirement, instead of me saying, you must tell me this much. So feedback is always important because uh, when they're writing or when they're speaking, they need to know, did I show progress? And I'm trying to put it back onto them and say, tell me which progress you think you made. That's what I'm working on is how do we balance that the student listens to themselves and I listen to them and we come to an agreement on, you were supposed to use connected sentences here, but did you? So right. that's what I'm working on. Cool, thank you. Um, you're getting some positive love there from some of the comments oh, especially from Madame uh, uh, Carbonneau, so that's cool. Um, all right, so how do your current online and in-person roles support French teachers? You've definitely touched on this. And I'm okay. uh, kind of glad I asked you about the whole myth about the, are you paid to, <laughs> to do all that you do online? Because um, I, you know I thought, I'm paid. Uh, that'd be very, very important that everybody understands. Um, but anyways, please, yeah. Go I'll ahead. tell you about how I'm paid. Every time a teacher shares an idea, that's payment for me. Um, I went into this whole world with having a wonderful mentor back in Central Kitsap. And if it hadn't been for her, sharing so much with me, I wouldn't have learned that we as educators should be sharing. That's pay enough for me. Um, my husband doesn't always agree, but um, when we get together and we have these uh, brainstorming ideals, or we, we have the wiki where people can put things on, uh, or a teacher says, and we just saw this on Twitter, one teacher said, Catherine, thank you for posting your unit on hunger and um, school cafeterias. I'm gonna use this because I'll be gone for a week. Thank you so much for sharing. That's pay right there. That's all I need is that we recognize the contributions of our colleagues for saving our, our bacon. Right, yep, nope, I I know exactly what that feels like. So I, I, I agree. Yes. <laughs> okay, and do you want me to show you the, the resources that I provide teachers? Yeah, can we do that now? Okay. That's perfect, because yeah. I only have two more questions. So this is kind of a good okay. thing. And then what we'll do is we'll go back um, to that. So let's see. And what I'm going to do is you'll see very soon I'm going to ask you to be presenter. So you'll you just be so okay. kind as to accept that request, please. I shall accept, <laughs> yes. I shall accept the control. All right. So okay. I sent it over to you. And okay. now we are okay, in your so land. Can... <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So the, the, <clears throat> now I know there's a lot of French teachers here and they've probably heard me or seen me or been subjected to me on French teachers in the US, this is our wiki. 
And we're kind of working towards other things for the um, EF Prof USA. But for right now, I'm trying to help teachers get into the habit of sharing things. So the ATF resource teaching, uh, excuse me, the ATF teaching resource wiki was designed because we share so many things on Facebook and 4,000 members sharing. Everybody was lost. They couldn't find what they had shared or they didn't save the post or something happened to the document. I said, why don't we put it all in one place? Right. And so we made this this wiki and it has it is organized by what most teachers wanted. So you have all of the resources of the ATF. And I'm not saying you have to be a member of the ATF, but if you are, that's contributing to this free service for you. Um, we have world language teacher blogs, IPAs. So some teachers have shared, especially Lisa Shepard. Lisa Shepard is the goddess of. But you know, we, we try to say, if you need an IPA, instead of making one, how about you look at one? And we, we um, kind of chop them up into the AP themes, although if you're not an AP teacher, that's OK. It's just within that theme you can use it. And then we try and tell you it's for novice high, it's for intermediate high. And we don't have every single a theme covered yet, but we have so many wonderful resources ready for you to go. And a lot of teachers say, I need something for a sick day. Well, why don't you look on the wiki and see what we have? We have Ed Puzzles. So, so many Ed Puzzles. If you haven't used Ed Puzzle as a free resource, go there and, and look at all the different videos that have been um, provided by teachers with questions. And we try again to say which level that it, that it serves. Right. So you can send your, 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 your students there, have them log in, have them fill out the, 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 have them watch the videos. It's ready to go. And we also did it by um, listening activities, writing activities, resources for textbook teachers. Absolutely. Um, there are so many teachers that need extra input for their students. And what I love is that people are sharing their entire, um, their PowerPoints for every single chapter. Nice. Uh, the, amount of, the amount of time that was put into that and that is being shared with you for free. I uh, love what we're doing. Uh, Chansoy Musique. There's so many ways that teachers want to use music. Of course, we need to put a link to um, what you're doing also, Stephen, so that we can we can pull more people into that. But Absolutely. many teachers have, have shared their music mani, their music uh, mani musical, and how they use videos, how they use songs, and all of the activities for that. So uh, I push this one the most because I think it's one of the best places. You have a search box up here, and sometimes you need to search in French, sometimes in English. You know, if you if you become a member, you can upload. If you're not a member, you can still just download what you find. Oh, cool! And hopefully, you'll share one thing because if I think we have something like let's just take a look. Um, we have something over 600 members right now, if I remember right. 709, 709 members who are waiting to share their information with you. Okay, so that's one thing. The other way that I, I help out teachers is I have the ATF Pinterest page. Yeah. And these boards, oh my gosh, I know. I'm trying to emulate um, Sarah Shackelford over in the Central States. She has one of the best uh, ever Pinterest boards, but I'm concentrating on French. Okay. So these, are, these boards are organized into, again, some of the AP themes, but for any level, and then some themes and topics and culture and history. So when you need something for your, your healthy lifestyles, okay, here's, here's all these wonderful uh, resources that we've collected from you from the Francophone world. And I like to make sure that it's from different places. So I have a lot of Canadian artifacts and um, as much as we can from different parts of the world. So those are great boards to follow. And if you look down, there's something like, I think more than 30 boards. So there are, there's 71, no, it's, uh, there's, there's quite a few boards. We'll put it that way. Okay, so if you are tired of looking through uh, Google Images for all those perfect uh, infographics or readings, we have one for podcasts so that students can listen. We have them for, um, we have, uh, ways for the students to connect with languages beyond just visuals. So there's, there's a whole ton of information there. Nice. And then we'll go on to the YouTube page because that's what I do. I love looking for videos that are appropriate for K-16 teachers. And I always say, make sure you watch the video. But again, these playlists are organized either by theme 
or culture or maybe just pedagogical um, like vocabulaire tâche ménagère. Okay, some people want those. Right. And not every single playlist has, you know, 70 videos, but I'm working on those and I'm always just loving it when people want to share a video and I can put it in there. If you want to become a contributor to these playlists, I can add you as as a, a curator with me. Right. So there are well, there, there's over 5,000 videos that I've collected, 5,000 videos. So a lot of teachers say, I'm tired of looking for that, that video. And I say, well, have you looked in this playlist? So go there and see what you see. Um, my favorite thing is putting in the publicité. And I had a, a whole list of publicité uh, for, um, uh, for cars and um, food. Everything is all set up for you. Lots of things where you can just kind of scroll through and know that someone's looked at these videos. So if you look at Cuisine Nourriture, it has 85 videos. Right. That's, I mean, that's set for you. And then at Canada Francophone, there's, there, if you can't find it, then I've done something wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. Some people don't like Pinterest. I myself am not a big Pinterest fan. I don't like the visuals. So I like the Digo library. And it basically is a mirror of the Pinterest. Pinterest is very visual. Digo is more like a card catalog back in the day. And if you know what I'm talking about, then you're about my age. Yay. We have, yes. And I mean, the, the catalog is full of all of the tags that I've put in. So let's say that you needed something with audio. Okay, so you would click on that. And then you can look at all the different sub headings. So maybe you want something on enfance. And so then you'll see all of those resources. So you know that it's audio, you know that it's enfance. And then if you want something like Quête de Soi, it's, it's very detailed so that where Pinterest, you have to just throw it into one board and you can't really sub put subcategories. Right. Digo goes the deeper way and you can decide how do you want to, to edit or how do you want to search? And I always just say, look at the tags. And there's so many tags, it is alphabetical, but um, I, I have tons of podcasts on here and, you know, vocabulary sets. So here's again, tâche ménagère. And if you wanted to do it for um, activité ludique, you have that, all of those resources. This is just, it's so much better than Google because Google, it's every single thing ever sure. created. But the Digo library has been curated by a French teacher who knows what teachers need. Okay, so that's that's the, some of the big ones. So the ATF, that's my job, uh, my role, <laughs> my job. It, it's one of my wonderful pleasures. Um, one other thing that I do for teachers is I have a, um, a technology website for teachers who need help with, maybe they've just gotten a class set of iPads or a class set of um, Chromebooks. Okay. And I always say, what are you going to do with those? Because just doing Quizlet and Kahoot, no offense. Um, that gets to be overwhelmingly uh, repetitive. Absolutely. So I've given lots of ways for teachers to use the technology resources, the tools that they've been used, uh, given. And so um, I have teacher examples and student examples for most of these different uh, websites and apps. And you know, one teacher say, "I need an idea for a comic strip." Well, here's 15. Right. You, know, you nice. can go out and do those. And you have my student examples. I always post that. I say, hey, guys, um, that's going to be on my website, so do a really good job on it. If you have iOS, so a lot of your students have iPhones, or if you have iPads, I set up the um, apps so that you can do audio, storytelling, assessment. I have them specifically for French. Okay, so there's tons of books that the kids can read on their iPhones, and some of them are free and some of them are paid. But you can go to the website, the, the Thinking About Syncing website, and basically find out what do I need? What is it that I can do with my students and show off their, their, their learning instead of just like um, digital worksheets? What are the real storytelling and um, more in-depth ways that I, can, that I can help my students learn about, um, about language and cultures with these devices? Absolutely. So, there you go. That's a lot of the stuff I do. So I'm going to go back to you yeah. and pull up that. You might want to take back the control. I will. Just I guess let's see if there's any questions. Yeah, I, I was answering yes. a lot. Of, a lot of people were asking for the websites, so I was typing them in as you were talking. Thank you. So you know what? I, I can put that in the chat, chat box if you need it. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, so here's the technology website. That's just the basic one. And then if you want the ATF wiki, 
I'll go back here and put that one in. Okay, and then it looks like you've got the Pinterest pages and everything all set up as well. Right. I'll just put those in there for anyone else. Those are playlists. Um, this is not, you know, an overnight type of flyby situation. I've been working on this for about eight years. Right. So don't expect that you can, you know, find everything you need in one day. This is, this is something for you to once in a while go to and find one or two resources. And if you don't find them, you gotta, you gotta contact me and say, Catherine, I'm looking for this. What can I do? And I'll say, okay, let me find it for you because I know your time is valuable. What can I do? I think we put the for the AP. I think everything's in there by now. So, I good. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out just uh, a tag there um, for you to consider putting in the French playground there. I didn't see French playground listed. I shall uh, put that I in that. there, and I will put that in Digo and on our ATF uh, teaching resources. Okay, because the advantage of the French and playground. That, I'll put it live. Yeah, I'll put the, absolutely, as, and as that's to, that's important. Know, the, there's a lot of canned online stuff. Whereas the French playground, I just, for those who believe in, like I said, doing spontaneous real life French, you know what I mean, for practice and conversations, yeah. et cetera. I think it's should really I put important. You under, should I put you under game sites or francophone sites? We can talk about that later. Where, what would the best place to be to put the French playground? You might have to make a new category. I'm not sure. We um, might have to. Yeah, because it's, it's real, live, authentic, right? And that's what... Yes. We, we should be targeting for our students, in my opinion. Sorry. Um, I believe you. I believe I agree. Yeah. So yeah, no, for sure. But I uh, just thought I'd throw that out to consider. Um, we'll do that. And, when I didn't and Express Lab too. If you've never tried Express Lab, I would deeply, deeply consider putting that one up too as well, because that Express Lab. Yeah, because it actually has one. the entire Actful uh, ladder um, of proficiency covered, so students kind of work their way through things. So. And they're wow. even, they're actually about to finish their adding on their uh, speech recognition technology. So yes. when they, when your students participate in it, they will be able to actually, it'll tell them where they're at as far as fluency goes. So it's, that's really exciting. A new addition that I know that they're doing. I didn't see Express Lab, so I just thought I'd throw that out there too. So, um, yeah. So I would give it a little suggestion to Sherwin. Um, a lot of the things that are blocked on, uh, you said to just do it from home, and I say, well, go to the Digo site because the Digo and the Pinterest mirror, mirror each other. So everything that I put on Pinterest, I also put on on Digo. So it's under. So if you find something inside, um, well, let's see, um, Vie Contemporaine, it'll be over here as well. You can just type that in, and nice job. There it is, right there. And the same exact resources will show up. You just you click on it. And there, it's take, it takes you right to it. So hopefully Digo isn't blocked at your school. Um, Pinterest, you know that you basically have to kind of go through a little rigmarole where you click on, you click on the link, and then you have to go visit the site actually. And that's important because here it says I'm going to save it enregistré. It runs in French. Visiter. That will actually take you to that to that site, and then you can save what you need to. I love this one. Oh my gosh, have you have you seen this one? No. Je parle, je parle québécois. Oh, an amazing site because I want my students to be exposed to a variety of accents. And Thank my you. family is québécois. Thank you. Um, my family is originally québécois, so uh, it's important for my students to hear that uh, because the AP test pulls that out all the time. And even for my my beginning students, I want them to hear that. But so I think we covered that. Oh, and there's where I what? see interactive language sites. That's probably where I put the French playground, I guess. Okay, I'll put you in there. I'll put you up to the top. Just a thought. Okay, no, yeah. it's cool. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, thank you for mentioning French from all over the world. I mean, so if we have 50 <laughs> different countries where French is like actively spoken, not to mention that there's French people all over the world, um, then exposing them to just one or two countries, I think is we're robbing our students of an enriching experience, you know, so. And, you know, what I would do is if you're in the, say the YouTube, and you, put, you know, type in Senegal, and you can do it, most likely it's gonna be in French because I have tried to help teachers, you know, with, with language. Okay, look at this, there's a whole, there's eight videos on Senegal film et culture. 
So I want to make sure that you know that that exists. If, you, if you're looking for something, that I try and tag it as often as possible because um, so a lot of teachers will say, well, I've never been there and I don't know the culture. Well, that's kind of the point is that you're trying with your students to learn about different places. Right. So, so you don't need to be the expert, but you should know where the resources are so that your students can explore and bring back what they've learned. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the only sad thing is, and you, you alluded to it, and so did some of the things Charwin even said, um, you know, what if at my school these things are blocked? So, so YouTube's blocked in some places. Uh, yeah. Pinterest is certainly blocked. Facebook is absolutely blocked. I know on our, our board. Um, that's unfortunate. That's so I would suggest you uh, go to these things kind of on your own time at your house. You, yeah. you write down the URLs for specific sites, and then you kind of go from there. So. I think you can see my desktop right now. I've got a whole bunch of like WM Recorder mm -hmm. and um, Capture, and my other favorite is uh, let's see if I can find it is Snagit, right there, Snagit. Okay. It isn't free, but it is a lifesaver. What does it because do? Because it records, it can record live um, live uh, streaming. It can record um, uh, YouTube videos, the, um, Daily Motion, any type of videos that you need. You can basically screen screencastify them, okay. and uh, you can make your own copy of the video. I put it on my hard drive, and there we go. I don't have to worry about it because okay. I've made a copy. Um, I started out with WM Recorder, which is one of my favorite. I've I've got several versions of it. Mm -hmm. um, you can do both audio and video for that. So if you're listening to France Info or um, uh, RFI or the one. Um, Radio Canada, you have that chance to record the, the the audio, and that's that's huge for me. Right, thank you. Okay, and I just put up another website. I put offliberty.com for those who want to grab things from Daily Motion or YouTube, and they just want yeah. to download the videos okay. themselves. And, off, and off be the... careful, be careful of what you which which program that you use because Keep Bid can kind of be a little um, uh, sketchy sometimes. What can there sir? Are couples, uh, Keep Bid. What's that? That's one. Of, it's one of those sites that you can download videos on. Oh, I've um, never heard of it. Okay. Yeah, and it it was really popular for a while because everyone would say, "Oh, how do I get those videos?" And someone would say, "Keep vid, K E E P V I D." Okay. And and then a couple of times I've noticed that I've had some viruses being attacking my computer from that. So always check out a website before you decide to download it. Make sure that the um, comments about that site don't include uh, malware or virus. Okay, I've had no problems with Off Liberty, so. That's a good one to have. I would That's, suggest offliberty.com. Get back to those last two questions then, would I have? Yes, please, let's do that. I give you control of the board, eh? Okay, yes, please. And thank you for saying A. Eh. Oh, uh, well, I told you, my family's Canadian, so. Great. Okay, so I should be heading back there. Okay, can you see my screen now, everybody? Yep. Okay, sweet. All right, so question four. What do you consider to be the role or roles of technology in a world language classroom? What philosophies do you follow to ensure quality student interactions with devices or web tools or apps? Fortunately, you just walked us through um, many of them. Um, but I, I'd feel free to, I don't know, expand, um, especially, I don't know. You know the truth, Catherine, yeah. out there, that there are still people doing um, the... the just the the old school way of doing things, and they just ha are are just not wanting to do technology at all. How would you encourage somebody to get into technology? Well, uh, a lot of you in this chat have been to one of my uh, technology workshops. So if you have been, you can put a little we in there or a yes. I got my first. I, I've I've worked with technology with students since um, 1997. So I've been out there making websites for many, many years. And I learned quickly that if it's just a game, if it's just a game, the students won't be, um, they'll be they'll be thrilled for a few minutes, but it doesn't mean that they'll become lifelong learners because of that game. I like to use sites and apps that help them retell and show off their learning. So I do a lot of digital storytelling. <coughs> And in the beginning, when I first got my, well, I think I got 10 class iPods, and I mean the generation four iPods back way back in like 2006, I think, cool. 2007 maybe, uh, somewhere in there, it's been so long. 
I used those every single day, and I overwhelmed my students with projects. Ah. I did so much on technology. One student said one day, can we please just use paper and pencil today? Can we just color? And I went, oh, yeah, yeah. So I knew that I had gone overboard with the technology. And the, the balance that you have to find as Technology is not going to make better language learners. It will support them just as any other tool does. So I tend to look at technology from the, I can review things, I can apply my knowledge, and I can demonstrate it. And not as a, um, every single day we must use this because the school district says we're technology one-to-one -one school. Uh, I have 30 Chromebooks, 18 iPad minis, and something like 18 little iPods still from the original set that I got. And you'd be surprised how often I don't use them. They're there for review a quick little thing, or if the students are doing a screencastify, which is one of my favorite things to do with Google Slides or with YouTube, where they're taking a, 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 an animated short and narrating the story. I love Screencastify with the iPads or with the um, with the Chromebooks. That's a solid use of a, a pedagogical use for the for the technology. Um, I know that a lot of people know about SAMR. That's the technology, you know, like substitution, augmentation, modification, and reconfiguration, I think it is, or re redesign. Many teachers use Quizlet and say, I'm using technology, and I'll say, you are using a device and a website, but that's basically flashcards. And and so there's no right. level of, of, you haven't really done anything different because if the students had to write out the flashcards, they'd be doing the same thing. Well, they get to see their points. I understand that's that's internalized for the kids. They like the excitement. Same thing with Kuhoot. Um, quizzes, there's so many different sites that are just basic reviews. But when you get to that level of having the students produce with their language, we're going to be doing some green screen pretty soon with Do Ink, D O I N K, and you know there's going to be like three levels. Three levels will be an AR, so an augmented reality level. There's going to be the students and their video, and there's going to be the background with them what they're talking about, and that's that's beyond crazy. Where you are on that scale of SAMR or TPAC, if you use that model, that's for you to decide. You do not have to use every single thing every single day. And I want you to think about what's the pedagogical sound purpose you as a teacher, what, can, what can you do now that you couldn't do before? And if you do reach that you know, modification or augmentation level, that's great. But if you don't, you know, try and dip your toes in once in a while. There you go. No, absolutely. that's my philosophy. No, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I was just sharing in the chat box how blessed all the new teachers are. Um, so, Catherine, it sounds like you've been teaching um, almost as much as as long as I, I have. And uh, when I when I started the the schools that I started at, we didn't even have photocopiers. So imagine mm -hmm. what like, how what it was like. It was almost chalk and slate um, and and uh, fountain pens. Uh, I have run to, mimeographs. Well, yeah, compared to what we have now, it's, oh my word, it's just, it's incredible. But, and I, I like the, you know, the, there was one comment, you know, say, say thank you for, we don't have to use tech every day. I, again, that's a prescribed deal that the school district might be trying to push, but the truth is that students need to be kind of down and dirty with the language. They need to be touching things and playing with it. My God. Technologies, yeah, I mean, they, they cannot be, it can't be automatic by just clicking a button. And language, language is so internalized. My students love the little um, comment, the the little uh, strip of sentences that we that we play around with. Um, they love the the visual cards that I use. I could be using those on Quizlet, but I want the actual things in their hands. And then once that's internalized, we take the digital tool, and the students present what they've acquired present their their knowledge and that that's for me more powerful than than just flipping cards uh, on, a, on a on a on a computer no it's so nice to hear um yes i personally subscribe to the live french learn french um, philosophy and so that's so nice mm -hmm. to hear you say that 
because it's, oh, well. it's, I think it's, we need to meet. I think we need to meet. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And I just, just to defend, I, I'm not a Quizlet fan, so I won't defend Quizlet, but to defend uh, Kahoot, um, you could even come, well, see, tomorrow morning will be too early for you, unfortunately, but there is a, a live Kahoot yeah. event on the French Playground at 9.20 a.m. Uh, Eastern oh Standard Time. So no, 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 but I, but hear me yeah. out though, hear me out, because I, yeah. I, I do need to defend Kahoot when it's done properly you can hit all four strands. So listening, reading, writing. Um, and when the way that it's done in the French playground is the game, like I said, will have many schools and playing at the same time, but it's hosted live. So there, the questions are read, the, the uh, questions are discussed after, the answers possibilities are discussed. Uh, there's interaction, there's, you know what I mean? So I, I just... We Poor Kahoot. I just I, want to make sure that everybody knows that. Kahoot is amazing if you have a thoughtful teacher. Now, right. I will say a colleague I know use it every single day, every single classroom, and the kids would go, oh, my God, not another Kahoot. Right, exactly. So, right. So the philosophy I'm telling you is be aware that your students get tired of tech. They do. They, they If it's the same thing every day, there's they hear that music and they go, gee, mini crick, it's not again. Please, dear God, not that. So, yes, I want my students to be involved with a game around the country. That's going to drive them crazy. We're going to get those kids out on the East Coast. Okay, let's get them. Of course, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. So, no, no, once no. in a while, but, no, we, we have yeah, to do absolutely. a West Coast. No, we would oh, no. join us for uh, another time for sure. <laughs> for let's sure. do it. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Okay. Cool. And yes, uh, people don't just don't worry. Don't go around saying ATN hates Quizlet. I just said I don't prefer Quizlet over Kahoot, just so you know. Quizlet Live? Quizlet Live? Quizlet Live School. Yeah, tried it. So. Fun, yeah. Yeah, for sure. We all have the things that work with our students the best. I just learned how to play 99 in French 2 the other day. That got crazy. <laughs> this is an intense game if you've never played 99 with your, with your novice highs. They strive shall we say, to get past 70 in French. Okay, cool. Yeah, look at it. This is this is what I'm talking about. So this is good. This mm -hmm. is awesome. So we, we it's just it's such a wonderful time to be teaching. Honestly, it is. It's a wonderful time. I mean, it's... it's I, well, I think Tell everybody a lot of... Really quickly. Mm -hmm. Tell them about it. 99. Um, I'll put that in the chat box on how to find the 99 game. But I'll say that a lot of teachers are faced with um, the administrative point of view, that's not as easy to get around. And I understand that, that I believe me, there's, there's things that make teaching very, very difficult. And then there are the things that make teaching French most magical right now. Right. Yeah, definitely put up the link. That would be awesome. Sorry, I'm just answering um, Madame Cabano's question. So, because you can yep. request live events and games at any time on the French Playgrounds. Oh, wow. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so, um, yeah, all right. And then my last question is what advice oh. or other ideas would you share to either a new teacher, oh my gosh. which I was trying to get at, <laughs> or a teacher who's looking to try something different? I kind of think we covered this, but that's okay. Kind of, yeah. Um, do, you got a, do you have another one that you want to share with us? I would say as often as you can, go to your world language, your state world language conferences. Mm, and Yes. Yes. Thank because you. I, I, that's how I got started at Mount Vernon High School with everything actful and everything lawful. And I guess 10 years down the road, because of my, my um, this is actually one of the questions that was asked at the actful interview. <laughs> it's interesting that you know this one. Um, it's, it's, it's entirely because of my participation in a world language organization, either at the state or national level, that I have become the teacher who I am. There's, I couldn't have figured this all out on my own. And the second thing is find somebody local, and I do mean within the next you know 50 miles, hopefully, even if it's just on Facebook and the person lives down the, 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 the road, you need you need to have some support because once in a while there are days where we just go, my students are driving me nuts. What should I do? Or this curriculum is un impossible. What other ways could I think of, you know, presenting it? Um, always, if, if you hate Twitter, I understand. But if you can just join t Twitter for Lang Chat, L-A-N-G Chat, C-H-A-T, on Thursday nights, which is, I think it's 8 o'clock Eastern time. 
there's so much that we discuss and it's thematic. If you can ever go to a TEL conference, which Thomas Sauer runs um, in the Path to Proficiency, that's a great way to find out new ideas and how world language teachers should be evaluated by our administration. So the TEL project, T-E-L-L -L project. Um, the LIL, so LIL is a, a leadership through, through ACTFL. Each one of these things that I've participated in has made me understand my role and my my abilities as a language teacher. And it's just, it's it's better than what I learned in college. And I know that a lot of people agree. It's so much more powerful than what we ever learned in any curriculum class. Yeah, so, yeah. Get involved. Don't even have to get involved. That's what I say. See, there's me holding that plaque. And I said at that exact meeting right there, after that was a couple you see the glass of champagne behind me um yeah <laughs> um, that's awesome. i thanked i thanked that the initial teacher who brought me to my first world language conference at the state level right and she she made it clear that that's what professionals do and she got us the money and i know so many school districts won't pay for it so save a latte once in a while you know, make your folders at home and put it into your World Language Conference Fund. It 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 can really change who you are and how your students um, um, interact with the language. I agree. And then, as Margaret Margaret and I were saying, I don't know if you read in the chat box that we would highly recommend also Fred Matters because Fred Matters actually comes to you because unfortunately the size of North America, the size of Canada, the size mm -hmm. of the United States. It is, um, it, it's just too big and people do not have a chance to go to ACTFL or even their own state right. conference at times. So to have an organization of speakers who will actually come to you, um, Fred Matters, anybody who's attended knows that you're treated like a rock star. You get a mm -hmm. swag bag at the end with, with tons of resources and great stuff, but it's the quality of the PD that's probably the best takeaway. So, right. Don't just stop at that. You, you mm -hmm. seek out opportunities Invite. to get these these please like Fred Matters and others to come to you too as well. Don't give up. Don't give up. Bug your school I, district. I was out in Philadelphia in September. Yep. With the, you know I I have been back and forth. I go I go down to California. I've been around the country. Um, I got invited to to uh, Victoria, but I couldn't make it. Um, I think. That is exactly the truth, is that sometimes you need to bring someone from out of district who's trying something different. And because if you're trying to implement a change in your own district, you can't be that choir. <clears throat> you can't be that prophet in your own in your own choir, or however the idiom goes. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I, I think a couple of the people that are like that have seen me present in the different um I've done technology, I've done uh, curriculum design, I've done many things, and they said, well having you here in person has really made the difference yes. for how do how do I present it to my colleagues so it's not just me it says Catherine says well don't don't put it as Catherine says but people around the country are trying this no absolutely hello are you still there I am still here okay I heard a, I heard a noise and you stopped at the same yeah. time as the noise I'm like oh no we lost our Catherine we um, lost Catherine. it's an excuse to have you back for another hour so that's okay oh, my uh, <laughs> Uh, right. So actually, that's what I want to say is thank you so very much for coming. Oh, oh Daphne just asked. Line chat. So Tuesday evenings, correct? Thursday. 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 Thursday sorry. Thursday evenings. Um, uh, so what? So they use the hashtag line chat, right? Yeah. And I'm going to type that in so you yes, can see what it looks too. like. Okay. okay. And there is a wiki for line chat. I can put that in there so that you can see what, what if you can't make it. You can go look at what everybody said, or and you can you can search it anytime because we're always posting stuff on the Lang Chat um, hashtag, so you can look at even today. It's you know like 60 people posted some ideas. Awesome, well that's awesome. good. Well it's funny that we're gonna segue into what our next Shop Talk um, webinar or show is going to be about because not only do I encourage you to go out to state conferences. Or for goodness sakes, there's never an excuse. You can always bring the speakers to you or you can bring Fred Matters to you, for example. But the same thing for your students. It's great to go on French Playground. I love it. That's great. And NHL stars, actors, actresses, magicians, all these people that your students are face-to-face -face interviewing. But it's it's touching. 
it's, it's touching, not just with the virtual stuff, right? So definitely in, um, have concerts your way. There's a lot of French education performers. There's a lot of cultural performers that you can have come to your areas. I definitely, rec definitely recommend that. But also, if you want to get really, really live, get your students' hands into food. <laughs> that, that is what next week is all about. Or not next week, sorry, the next uh, talk, which I believe is February 18th is when it is, um, I think. Don't quote me. Uh, but you'll see it all over social media. We'll post it. We'll post it on the, on the, the Shop Talk website as well. But the whole idea of bringing a French cafe into your school um, we're going to have special guests from Cafe Cud who actually go to schools and do French cafes in your school. Mm. But they're going to tell us how we can do this ourselves as teachers, which is really fantastic. So I do hope that everybody will uh, join us. What I do believe is I think it's it's in February anyways. That's all I know. I know it's not in two weeks. because We should go every two weeks, but it's Super Bowl weekend next week, so, uh, next two weeks away. So we're not going to compete with the Super Bowl. You know, we're going to let everybody enjoy their weekend. But please join us, Catherine. I hope you'll join us. I hope everybody here will join us. Absolutely. Um, because we can talk about fête de la gastronomie. Yeah, exactly. It's just ugh, food. Nothing, no better way to get to, your, to the students is through their stomach. You know, it's just it's so powerful. So anyways, um, yeah. So thank you very, very much, Catherine. We're going to be putting this up, everybody. So share with your friends. Let them know um that uh, this will be available at um let's see I'm trying to memorize the i believe this is the web link if it's not the web link it's close to the web link <laughs> i think that's the web link but anyways to, on the shop talk website um the web page sorry but uh that's where there's we've had a lot of great guests um in the past so there's some really cool ones up there and uh i'm just so very happy that you joined us catherine and thank you for energizing us for this upcoming week I know for many of us, we have um, it's exams or report cards around this time in, in Ontario here in Canada, where I teach. So yeah, so thank you so much for giving us the energy that we need. And oh my gosh, you you gave you know what you gave us, Captain? You know this is what I was picturing in my head was um, and I'm a kind of creative, kind of weird guy, I guess. But I was picturing Narnia. Like I felt like you were oh. opening the door to Narnia when you were showing us those resources. I'm going to quote you on that one. That is one of the most magical things anyone has ever said to me. Thank well, you. That was from the heart. My so, pleasure. Like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, I feel like we, we could take our students through the door. You know what I mean? And so that was that was Through the door of, and back again. That was kind of cool. Yes. Yeah. A little less, little less dangerous, though, than Narnia, though. <laughs> but, but well, the, we do have a brewery here called Aslan Brewery. So, do you? Okay. Oh, we do. It's, it is powerfully good beer so oh, okay. maybe we'll have to go celebrate with one of those i think that we we need to okay you, what you need to do is you need to you need to get me out maybe to do a concert or something like that and we'll use that as an excuse and then we'll, we'll go to aslan i think that's what we need to do but uh, i shall i shall be bringing this up at our next atf washington uh meeting there you go <laughs> yeah lead with the beer thing i think that's what'll win people over though uh, anyways we all leave with the beer Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Wow. This is ending on a very, very high note for me. So, okay. Um, I'm a big beer guy. Sorry. That's why. But anyways. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, thank you everybody else for joining us. And we hope that you have a really, really fantastic week. Oh, yeah. And um, this is just the beginning. This is where we all continue to be in touch. So we look forward to talking to you very, very soon. Take care, everybody. Bonsoir.